Shamira Suzuki sweeps the Superbike podium, and Roger's here to talk about his win. It's the Next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimira. Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm your host, Danielle Teal. If you missed last week's episode with Cameron Bobier, you missed a good time. But that's okay, you can always go back and watch it again on the front page of nextmotochampion.com or on YouTube channel or on dailymotion.com and a host of other places that Next Moto Champion Talk Show airs on. Just make sure you find it, you'll enjoy it. Now for the news. It was a blazing hot round six for Moto America over the weekend, and the always expected scorching temps made for some heated battles in all classes. Let's start with the KTM RC Cup. Brandon Posh led the weekend winning race one, while Anthony Maziato the third won race two, making it his fourth KTM RC Cup race win of the year. However, it's Posh who continues to lead the championship by 10 points over Maziato. In Super Stock 600, Bryce Prince was on top. After taking pole position, he put his head down, gapped the field in both races, and found himself two wins richer at the end of the weekend. He sits on top of the championship, 93 comfortable points ahead of second. In Super Sport, J.D. Beach swept the doubleheader at Barber, and although he said he wouldn't call it a clean sweep due to some mistakes he made on the track during the race, but we think he cleaned up pretty nicely when all said and done. In Bizazz Super Stock 1000, it was Josh Heron who dominated and also swept the class. He had a huge crowd of fans on the hill that he said he could actually see during the race. Congrats to Josh and good job to the Heron Compound Fan Club who came out and endured the heat all weekend. And that brings us to Superbike. It was a Yoshimura Suzuki showdown and the heat was on in both races. Both Tony Elias and Roger Hayden battled both the conditions and each other all the way to the end. Roger Hayden took race one and Tony Elias took race two. Cameron Bobier took solid thirds in both and maintained the points lead at the end of the weekend over teammate Josh Hayes with Roger Hayden close behind in third. This win has been a long time coming for Roger Hayden and we've got him on the talk show to talk about it later on. Press releases from the weekend can be found at nextmotochampion.com. And now, courtesy of Moto America, it's your Barber Motorsports Park highlights. from Barber Motorsports Park, and we're underway. Cameron Bowie, oh. runs off the track, right off the bat, onto the grass. He's going to go back, he's going to get one downshift. You can see him. He's trying to get that downshift, Greg. That is oh. a huge high side. Wow. Oh, this is a fast one too, Greg. That's going to be turn eight very fast oh. at the end of the back straight. Roger's going to make him go the long way, and that's what he's got to do. He's got to protect this inside. A couple of corners of this racetrack. Tony Elias looking for a way around. Is he going to try to go up the inside? It's hard acceleration. The number 95, Roger Hayden, has finally done it. Stoked right now. I'm happy for him. Here we go. Race number two getting underway. Are you on the edge of your seats? Well, I guarantee you so are all the fans here at Barber as clutches are out as Cameron Bobier tries to put the power to the ground, lifting the wheel in the air. Oh, but it's going to be Tony Elias who's going to take over the lead. Motorcycle stop! If you 
never done this. Wrestled around a 200 plus horsepower, 375 pound motorcycle with full leathers, helmets, boots, and gloves on. It is absolutely crazy when you're in the 90 plus degree temperatures and 50% humidity. It, these riders are some of the fittest athletes in the world. Let's take a look at your point standings after round six. Up next is round seven, set to take place at Utah Motorsports Campus, formerly known as Miller Motorsports Park. We've got more for you, but first, let's take a quick commercial break and thank some sponsors. back so we've given away a speedway motorsports shelter and last month a set of bridgestone tires now we've got an amazing prize pack from american cargo for you all you have to do is sign up for the weekly newsletter at the front page of nextmotochampion.com and the winner could be you just for signing up so if you haven't done it yet do it now and if you already did then hopefully the winner for the month of june giveaway sponsored by one of the best in the business american cargo could be you good luck Speaking of another great company, did you know that Yoshimura offers a refurbishing service? You can send them your old pipe and they'll make it like new again. Check out this video. When a customer buys a Yoshimura product, it's really we want them to think of it as a product for life. And we felt that our customers need to be satisfied and that's, that's very, very high on our priority list. We're in the assembly department. This is the room where we assemble all the mufflers that we build and ship all over the world. The guys in here can build 250 to 300 exhaust systems a day. Not only do they build all the new systems, they also do maintenance, accident, and crash repair. Everything is serviceable. We build everything so that it can be rebuilt. Making the product simple to rebuild is important for both manufacturing and for the customer, the end user after they get done with a season or some track days and they need to rebuild their exhaust system. You do not have to purchase a whole new muffler. You just have to send it back in and they'll do it here. We've got dozens of packing part numbers just depending on the volume of the muffler and the performance requirements. We have two or three different blends of fiber material we use. Each application requires a different amount of packing. We found in dyno testing a muffler loses horsepower when it loses as little as 50 grams of packing. So we become really sensitive to the weight of the mufflers and really sensitive to how much packing we install in it. When it sounds a little bit louder or you see some discoloration from sound, we ask you to send your muffler in and it comes back in here to this room where the same guys who built the muffler the first time can um, take it apart, inspect it, and make it like new for you again. On occasion, people do call us up and say, you know, I think you made a mistake. This isn't my pipe. My pipe was this, this old, crusty, you know, brown, ugly pipe. And it's, no, that's what we do. We, we have just as much pride in our product when it's 20 years old as we do when it's brand new. Yoshimura wa uragiraranai. 
that means you expect something from Yoshimura, Yoshimura will deliver. All right, let's take another quick commercial break. When we come back, we have this week's product spotlight. air intake systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. I told motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing in a minute. This week's Product Spotlight, we're looking at an upgrade that you may or may have not made to your motorcycle. This upgrade involves comfort and if you're racing, performance. We're talking about the GP V1 seat from Saddleman. Check this out. Now I've been to the Saddleman factory in Rancho Dominguez, California, and I've seen just exactly how these handcrafted seats come together. Saddleman's business has been built on comfort and performance that comes from their Saddle Gel and Gel Core technology based seats, and this GP V1 is their most advanced street bike seat to date. The Saddle Gel isolates engine and road vibration, a common cause of rider fatigue. Saddle gel is a molded solid with fluid-like properties that will not slide to one side or move around in your seat like air or water in a plastic bag. Instead, the proprietary design eliminates pressure points at the hip bones and tailbone by evenly distributing your weight across the surface of the seat. The saddle gel is placed into a seat mold that is specifically made for each motorcycle model. From there, the saddle gel inserts are covered with a progressive density foam. Before the cover goes on, it looks like this. And with the cover on, it has a modern, sleek, purpose-built design. You'll notice that this material is smooth, and then on the sides, you have some serious grip. This grip will help you grip the bike better with your legs and make it easier to pull over from one turn to the next. You can see on the underside of this seat that it's constructed of heavy-duty and high-quality materials and as many rivets as you can possibly fit. I've used Saddleman seats for years, and I can tell you that it could be the most improvement in comfort for the least amount of money. And on those long days, you're seriously gonna appreciate it. Now, you can pick one of these up for about 200 bucks and it even comes with a matching cover for your rear seat. So that's the gel infused Max Comfort GP V1 seat from Saddleman Seats. And that's this week's Product Spotlight. We've got Superbike Race 1 winner Roger Hayden up next. Don't go away. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at woodcraft-cfm.com. 
Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. I uh, don't have to worry about it overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do, like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Got to have the best to go fast. K&N Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. All right, and we're back. And he's won multiple superbike races in his career, but this one was long overdue. And we're happy to have him on to congratulate him on his victory. It's your race one winner from Barber, Yoshimura Suzuki's number 95, Roger Hayden. Roger, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time since we've had you on, so welcome back first and foremost. Um, obviously, we wanted to congratulate you on your win, so let's start by talking about that and how it's been a long time coming for you. Is the monkey finally off your back? You know, I think so. It was, uh, like you said, it's definitely a long time coming. Uh, the past year, I've been getting second so much, so close. It was, uh, it was getting really frustrating, and then, you know, those last couple laps with Tony, I was thinking, man, there's no way I can let this happen again. So uh, when I crossed that finish line, it was like, you know, like instant relief. Like, I don't have to answer the question, when when are you going to win? And, you know, he can't close out a race and all that other stuff. So uh, I definitely feel like the monkey's off my back, and it was just a, it was awesome for me. And, you know, I have a great team, you know, Yoshimura Suzuki, they're behind me 100%. And, uh, you know, my guys, they all they all need a win as well. They bust their butts just like me. So uh, it was great for everybody. Okay, so let's talk about a few things here. First of all, um, not getting the race win the last couple of seasons has not been for a lack of effort, obviously. Like you said, you guys work really hard, you and your team both. But getting second all the time has to be somewhat defeating. So talk about the pressure and the buildup uh, to this point and how that at, at some point has to have an effect on you um, and your concentration during a race. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, You know, it, it adds to the pressure and then, you know, obviously Tony coming in and uh, doing really well and, you know, winning a couple races. And then, you know, I still haven't won. And, you know, rule number one in racing is you're supposed to be your teammate because you're obviously on the same same equipment. So, uh, you know, it was definitely affecting me, you know, after uh, I can just feel my moods totally different this week ever since, ever since I won. And the pressure and just the outside noise was uh, – it would might have been bugging me a little more than, uh, you know, I led on. So, you know, as soon as I crossed that finish line, you know, it was just like finally, you know, all that hard work and everything paid off. Right. So let's talk about Tony being your teammate. Obviously, like you said, him coming in, get a couple of wins right out the gate, puts a little bit of added pressure on you, but I'm sure it has its advantages as well. So talk about that. Yeah. You know, me and Tony, actually, we get along really well and, uh, you know, we share a lot of information and talk and, you know, he's, he's a cool guy. He's a, he's a character for sure. He's a, he's a, he's a different, different guy, but, uh, you know, the whole morale of the team is really high because everybody's doing so well. And it's been a while since Yoshimura has won. And this is, you know, another weekend that we swept and it's been a long time since, you know, Yosh just did that. And then now to do it a couple of times a year is, uh, it is awesome, but, uh, you know, we race close and, you know, both of us want to win. But at the same time, you know, after both races, we were uh, cutting up and laughing and stuff. So uh, so everything's good. And like I said, I really like him. He's, uh, he's a character. He's, he's really funny and he's like impossible not to like. Well, it seems like he's enhancing the program as a whole and uh, obviously uh, forcing you to kind of step your game up as well. But you had your whole family there this weekend. Mom, dad, Tommy, Nikki, girlfriends, wives, fiancés, nieces, and even some friends from the OWB. So did anybody say anything to you, um, give you any advice, words of wisdom that resonated for your weekend? No, not really. Uh, I don't know. I had a really good feeling going into the weekend. And then one of my buddies, Scott Rice, who came down, he said, oh, I got a really good feeling about this weekend. And, uh, you know, they didn't really give me any advice like that weekend. But, you know, my brothers do help me out a lot, you know, during the week, the training with and, you know, things like that. But 
on a race weekend, I kind of like to do my, uh, do my own thing. And, uh, you know, it didn't make it just that much sweeter to, you know, cause you always, as a younger brother, you always want to, you know, make your older siblings proud of you. And, you know, it's the same as like your parents as well. You want your parents to be proud of you. And, you know, you stand up on top of the box and you see people from your hometown there. And it's just, uh, it was just really cool. And, you know, we are a close knit family. Like my, my nieces, they love coming up on the podium and, you know, I told them they can't come up anymore unless I win. So, uh, they probably put more pressure on me than anybody. So, uh, so I'm glad they, uh, they got to come up there and, um, my dad is health hasn't been the greatest. So, uh, you know, he always talks about how when we do good or winning, that's like the best medicine for him makes him feel really good. So, uh, it just made it that much more special having my mom and dad there just because they've been behind me. As I said, after the race, you know, just as parents, not really just as far as racing, but, uh, you know, as life, as things come up and, you know, they're just, they're just great parents. And for them to, I'm neighbors with them. So they see how, you know, how much I've been putting into this and trying to, trying to get that win. Well, I'm sure they are super proud of you and your dad must have been feeling uh, extra, especially good at the end of the weekend. So let's talk about your relationship with Yosha Mira. We've seen riders, multiple riders, kind of cycle in and out um, as teammates of yours, but you've been their constant rider for the last couple of years and you still are contracted through 2017. So talk about your relationship with Yosha Mira Suzuki. What's, well, uh, you know, my relationship with Yosha Mira and Suzuki is, uh, is really good. I really, it is like a family. It's a, uh, you know, it's one of the, the only, they're really straight up and honest and, you know, they don't ever tell me any, uh, any BS, which is really hard whenever you're trying to, uh, like the last time I re up my contract, you know, I kind of asked for a couple things and, you know, this just shows the company they are. And I didn't really think they would remember it. And then, you know, when I got, the contract, everything that I asked for like two months before was, was in there. And that's just, that's just the way they are. And, uh, you know, I, I love it. I got a great group of guys behind me, uh, Davey, Frenchie, Steve, James, Darren, all those guys, they believe in me as much as anybody else. And, uh, you know, they really do. And, and that's just, uh, you know, I want to work hard and I want to do good for them. And I think the same way they know that I put in my time and they always tell me how I deserve a win and stuff. So we kind of feed off each other. But and Yoshimir, you know, I remember going the first time I walked in their shop and you see all the championship banners. And it's like, you know, you realize then that you have big shoes to fill. They expect to win and uh, they put a lot of time and effort. They're a powerhouse superbike team. And I'm lucky to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, now I have friends at, at Yoshimir, at Suzuki, and it really is like a family. And I, I love being there. And I hope that, um, you know, I am hope I'm there for a long time. Well, speaking of championships, you're really not that far out of the championship hunt at this point. I think 15 points or 14 be uh, points behind Cam and only one behind second place, Josh Hayes. So is that the focus at this point now you've got the win something that you've been trying to accomplish uh, for the last two seasons uh and now is the championship something that's on the horizon for you or in your line of sight you know the beginning of the season my goal obviously was to to win some races for sure but i wanted when we leave laguna for that two-month break i wanted to have a chance for the championship because i've never i've always been out of it by this point for whatever reason and I thought it was time for me to, to uh, finally take that step. And, you know, that's still my focus is when we go to New Jersey, I want to have a chance somehow, some way for the, you know, to be the champion. And that's uh, now, yeah, I'm starting to kind of think about that a little bit. Um, after the race, I never really look at the points. And this weekend I did. So uh, I guess it is with my mind a little more. But... You know, really nothing changes because if I don't keep winning and keep running at the front, then Cam will keep pulling away and then Tony will catch me and then Josh will, uh, you know, pull back away. So I, I'm going to have to win more races if I want to be the champion. That's the bottom line. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I've uh, been there every weekend so far besides the race in New Jersey. 
So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a good place. I'm really, I'm really focused and, but yeah, definitely everybody wants to be a champion and that's the, uh, that's the goal at the end of the year. So that I said the week at road America, it's starting to get crunch time. You know, if you're going to be the champion or you're going to be a contender, it's time to make a push. And, you know, I feel like at Barber, I, I made a pretty good push for it. Of course you did. And it was a good track for you, probably what you would consider your home track, so we're better to do it. Uh, you just turned 33, Roger. means 18 years as a professional motorcycle racer for you, which is a feat in itself. I mean, nobody can really say they've had that much longevity with, with that much success. Uh, we know you eat, sleep, breathe, train. It's all motorcycles. But what else are you doing uh, in your free time besides cycling and prepping for the next race? Uh... I don't know. I like, uh, well, I'm really big into sports. I'm a huge Chicago Bears fan. No so way. I like doing that. And I like, uh, I like going hunting and fishing and things like that. I like outdoor stuff. And, you know, my favorite thing is probably hanging out with, uh, with my, my nieces actually. So I know I see them up there swimming. So I already, you know, told my girlfriend, as soon as this is done, we're going up there and going swimming with them the rest of the afternoon. I already did my training. So, uh, you know, I really like my, you know, I really love being around my family, my nieces and, you know, just doing just like random stuff, you know, going to different sporting events and, and uh, stuff like that. So I like to, uh, I kind of like to keep to myself and kind of keep racing you know, racing, and then when I'm away from it, I like to be away from it. And uh, you know, I'm really big into fantasy sports too. So I like, I like doing all that nerdy stuff, doing fantasy lineups and stuff like that. So uh, pretty much just an average guy. Besides, besides on a race weekend. Where you're anything but average. Raj, congratulations on your first win of the season, first one for Moto America, uh, for the Moto America series. And we wanted to get you on to congratulate you. And hopefully, this is the beginning uh, of a winning streak for you and hope to get you back on later in the season if that's the case. He's after the championship now, he's in the hunt. He's only 14 points behind Cameron Bobier. It's the number 95, Roger Hayden. Roger, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial break. I've been riding my whole life. I train every day. I'm going to be the best rider I can be. The bike is an extension of myself. It's also got to be the best. That's why I race with Saddleman seat covers. Each seat cover is handcrafted with the finest materials available. My seat has pleats stitched on the back, which let me know where I'm at on the bike. This is a huge advantage on the track, and my lap times show it. This seat works so well that it's now available to the public. 
but honestly, it's one of those things you don't want the competition to know about. So don't tell anyone. We'd like to congratulate a couple members of the next Moto Champion cycling team. J.D. Beach, Garrett Gerloff, Joe Roberts, and Bobby Fong all made it on the box over the weekend. And we'd like to think it has a something to do with all the cycling they've been doing. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Scott Bicycles. Just a quick shout out to Jason Aguilar, who suffered a crash at Barber, resulting in a broken foot. We caught up with Jason over the weekend, and despite being all casted up, he said he was lucky it wasn't much worse. And by the looks of his Arai helmet, it definitely could have been. Get well soon, Jason. Good job, Arai. Track day season is in full swing, and Next Motor Champion supports two excellent organizations. Sport Bike Track Time and N2 Track Days both have something for everyone. These professional organizations have exceptional environments for the newest novice to the track day expert. No matter where you are or what your availability, surely one of these track days has something for you. Check them out at sportbiketracktime.com and N2TD.org to find your perfect track day. You don't want to miss anything from Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track, so be sure to tune in for more this season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and AMA Pro Flat Track coverage. And don't forget to join the others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each Friday. And last but not least, all of us over here at Next Moto Champion are avid supporters of our military men and women, and we're proud to support Vet Motorsports, a program that empowers veterans through motorsports. If you've never heard of them, check them out at vetmotorsports.org and see See where some of your veterans will be engaging in hands-on motorsports activity in a paddock near you. Vet Motorsports, helping to heal vets through motorsports, and for that, we'd like to thank them. That's all for this week, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Do that over. Oh my God, that was it, Vance. Oh my God.